Hey guys, like I mentioned in our group me, uh, we're starting our new series this week on relationships, uh, which is a new, um, maybe exciting topic if you want to look at it that way. Um, and we're going to be talking about singleness um, this Sunday, so understanding that before we push into uh, what the purpose of dating is, what the purpose of marriage is, things like that. Uh, discussion groups are pretty simple this week. You're actually going to hopefully do a lot of uh, listening and kind of prying from your students to try to um, hear and understand where our different groups, middle schoolers and high schoolers, are at on this subject, what they hear um, in school, what the predominant views they're kind of exposed to are. Um, so that's kind of a big part of the goal uh, this Sunday is for you guys to, to hear from them. Um, I'm going to be teaching out of 1 Corinthians 7, which is Paul's kind of long um, a chapter on singleness and marriage and divorce and um, a lot of different things surrounding those topics. We're going to hop around in there to a couple different spots and focus on his view of singleness. Um, and so that's going to be the topic of discussion in your groups. I uh, will start with that first question we've been doing, see if they want to set the pace with anything, if they're confused. Uh, or have comments on anything that was said during the large group lesson. Um, if not, move on down to number two. Um, and this is a, a big one to hopefully spend some time on if you can get your students talking about it. Uh, you're just going to ask them how they would describe their culture's view or perspective on dating and singleness. And just what we mean by that is what are you exposed to? How do people your age at your schools talk about this? Is this something they're extremely focused on? Is it something people don't really talk about all that often? And it's not really on the, um, the horizon for a lot of people. Um, yeah, it, there's a lot of contradictory things happening in culture almost to where it makes this topic really um, hard to get a grasp on. Um, you know, there's a lot of devaluing of marriage and dating in a lot of um, different ways through the LGBTQ plus movement, through even um, the emphasis on career and uh, money and materialism um, and, uh, and kind of increased opportunities even for uh, women uh, in the workplace has kind of led to people not caring quite as much about marriage and people getting married later on in life. And yet at the same time, there is this emphasis on um, sex as kind of the ultimate experience that you can have, uh, which encourages people to not necessarily get married, but to be dating as soon as possible. Um, and so there's kind of these, all these different things happening in culture, some of which kind of uh, make you think dating, marriage, less important to this generation, and others make it seem like it might be way more important. And so um, we want to try to get a, a grasp on where our students are at um, with all of that, what they're hearing in their schools. And so um, try to get them talking on that, try to get different perspectives. We have tons of different kids in different schools. Um, again, we're trying to listen, hear where they're at. This may help us later on in the series, may help you later on um, in the series. And so that's question two. It's really just an, uh, an opinion uh, question or, or kind of a reporting on what they're hearing. Uh, number three is more of a, an opinion, just asking them. We'll touch on this a little bit um, about um, maybe when you should date. I won't hit on it much, so I'm leaving a lot of that discussion for your groups. Ask them if they see potential problems that could spring up by uh, people dating in their early teenage years or even their uh, 14, 15, 16, uh, kind of the middle uh, portion of their teenage years, what are problems that can spring out um, of that? Uh, see what their thoughts are. Um, and you can even, if you wanna not phrase that so negatively, you can ask them what their views on, when should people start dating? What do you think, do you think? Uh, is there a certain age group? Is it a maturity level thing? Um, again, prying at their thoughts there. Uh, number four uh, is about uh, what we talked about in the lesson, uh, the view of singleness and marriage that kind of I'll present from 1 Corinthians 7 from the Apostle Paul. How does that push against uh, how the culture views singleness and marriage? Um, there's going to be a ton of really obvious answers here for students to grab at, hopefully, and for you to grab at. I'm sure you'll have some good things to add on here. Um, one main way that I would 
after students have kind of given some good answers, present out is that Paul is really calling in 1 Corinthians 7 for um, pure, supreme, absolute devotion uh, to Christ. And that's something that uh, obviously uh, the culture pushes against, but even a lot of Christians are kind of uncomfortable with that idea. Not a lot of Christians live um, that way. Uh, We kind of buy into this balanced lifestyle that um, most, most of the culture um, lives according to, where we kind of spread out our stock and our happiness into different things, um, money, sports, family, uh, career success, all of these different things can make me happy, and I'm kind of um, almost equally invested in all of them and hopefully at least a couple of them are going well at any point in time so I can be at least reasonably happy. Um, And Paul is instead, uh, his kind of idea behind why he suggests singleness if people can handle it is because they can be totally devoted um, to the Lord. And if you're married, you at least have to split that between uh, the Lord and your spouse and eventually um, your kids Um, And he is uh, very focused on pursuing Christ with all that he is, which is something that's weird for the culture, and it's even weird for a lot of Christian culture. Um, Question number five, how do you think this view of singleness, again, the one I kind of present in the lesson, affects how we should date? This is kind of a preview to the next topic that we're going to be covering. Um, The next lesson we'll have is kind of, Um, when should we date? Why should we date? What's the purpose? Who should we date? Who should we try to be when we're entering dating? Um, Answering some of those questions. And so this is kind of a a forerunner for that. And it's really challenging them to pull from this lesson um, some implications for what dating should look like based on what singleness is supposed to look like. Uh, And then the last one, Um, In addition to helping our own faith, how would, if we were able to adopt this view of singleness uh, in our lives, how would that help um, a culture around us that's largely lost? Um, Let them answer that question. Um, Again, there's there's several obvious answers there. Uh, Kind of the big overarching one is this is one of the ways and always has been in a large part, one of the ways that Christian culture and secular culture differ uh, most harshly on. Um, there is a lot of difference between the way Christians should view a biblical view of dating, marriage, and a secular view of dating and marriage. And this is one of the ways that Christians should look most different to the culture, the way our students, if they would adopt a biblical mindset on these things, the way that they carry themselves as they enter into dating and eventually into marriage uh, will be a stark difference to what a lot of their unbelieving friends uh, are doing and believing. And so that's one of the, the best opportunities for them to be kind of a light in a really dark culture over the next several years of their, uh, of their lives. And so this is an extremely important point for us to, um, to adopt and to have a biblical mindset on. Far too often, these two mesh Christian and secular. We adopt way too many secular ideas about dating and marriage and singleness. Um, And a biblical view of dating and marriage is not just um, pushing against LGBTQ plus and not having sex before you're married. Uh, It's a lot more than that. And that's kind of usually, that's what Christians do. We're going to stand pat on these or try to but we don't push into a, a, a more nuanced or a, a deeper view of what a biblical view on dating and marriage means. And if we would do that, uh, you would see the separation between secular and Christian views of dating and marriage. That gap would widen and it would become really obvious to the culture um, who's, who's really pursuing the Lord and who's not. Uh, it would be a clear line of division, uh, which is... Um, in a lot of ways, a good thing. Uh, so the culture can see that there is a, a difference in the way that followers of Christ live their lives. So uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, it's been a long time since we've had a normal Sunday, so I'm looking forward to get back to that uh, this week. I'll see you guys on Sunday.